This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, this is the second lecture on the cost of capital, on the basic cost of capital calculations. In the previous lecture, we looked at the cost of equity finance. In this lecture, I want to look at the cost of debt finance, because remember, companies can raise money in either way, issue equity, issue shares, or issue what we call traded debt, long-term borrowing. Uh, and um, I say we call it debt, even though it's long-term borrowing, uh, non-current liabilities. Uh, traded debt, it's uh, bonds, loan stock, uh, loan notes, debentures. They're all different names for the same thing. Uh, but uh, it's traded on the stock exchange, so this debt, we issue it just like we issue shares. But instead of getting dividend, uh, they get fixed interest each year. Uh, and here, for the cost of debt, you're not given any formulae, but there are two situations you could deal with. The really easy one, which I'm afraid is less likely, is what we call irredeemable debt. Uh, what we mean by irredeemable is that the borrowing is never repayable. Uh, which doesn't happen in real life, but certainly could happen in the exam, uh, that you issue this debt, you raise money, you pay interest each year, forever, but you never actually repay the borrowing. And so, to explain what we do and the terminology, uh, look at example 7. Uh, FPLC has in issue 8% irredeemable debentures quoted at 90 PC X int. Well, just like shares are quoted on the stock exchange, prices change day to day, so are debentures, and that 90 is the market value uh, for $100 nominal. Unless you're told differently, uh, debt is always sold in blocks of $100 nominal. Well, in this question, the current market value of $100 nominal is 90. And that's what the PC means per $100 nominal per cent. There are 8% debentures. Well, 8% is what we call the coupon rate. And the coupon rate is the interest rate on nominal. And so although if you bought the, uh, some of these debentures today, you'd pay 90 on the stock exchange, you then get interest of 8% of nominal, you'd get interest of $8 a year. Well, first of all, the question says, what is the return to investors? Well, I know you're getting 8% on nominal, but the actual return you're getting, you would pay 90 today, then you'll get $8 a year forever, so just like uh, equity with constant dividends, the return to investors, or KD, is the interest on market value. You're getting $8 a year on a market value of, what was it, 90. You're therefore getting a return of 8 on 90. Uh, currently 8.89%. Is that right? 8 divided by 90? Yes, it is. 8.89. So that's the return to investors. However, it is very rare, very unlikely that that would be asked in the exam. Uh, because what we're much con more concerned about is how much it's costing the company uh, to borrow this money. 
Uh, and the one big difference uh, there is debtors against equity is that debt borrowing, they'll pay interest, the company, but the interest is allowable for tax. The in whatever interest they pay will reduce the taxable profit. It'll save them tax. And here, you'll always be given the rate. Uh, the tax rate is 30%. And so the cost of the company is actually going to be lower because although they will pay $8 a year, they'll save tax at 30% on $8. So the net cost is going to be lower. And so the cost of the company is the interest less the tax they're going to save. So interest times 1 minus the tax rate divided by market value. Now see what I mean? Is here there's tax of 30%, so they will pay $8 interest. But their tax liability will be reduced by 30% of $8, so the net cost will only be 0.7 or 70% of $8. And they're paying it on a market value of 90, uh, which comes to what? 0.7 times 8 divided by 90 is 6.22%. Now, I have a couple of things to say here. Before I do, though, uh, I think pretty obviously we could have written that 6.22 uh, another way. Uh, because, all right, the investors are getting 8.89, we're saving tax uh, 30%, so you could just have taken the cost of debt less the tax. Oh, sorry, the investors, return to investors less the tax, 8.89 times 0.7. Which again, obviously, 6.22%, so it doesn't matter. Uh, however, I'd already said it is very, very unlikely that you'd be actually asked for the return to the investors. Uh, normally, all that's ever required is the cost of the company. So um, it makes more sense to go straight to it rather than do it that way. And then I think you see what I mean. Uh, what else? Um, Secondly, the, the market value, just as with equity, we take the market value X interest. It's the market value, assuming they've just paid this year's interest. Uh, and we always assume that unless you're told differently. But just as with equity, although terribly unlikely in, in the exam, if you are told they're about to pay interest, it's come interest, then just as with equity, you would subtract the interest about to be paid. What else? Um, it doesn't change the numbers at all, but some people get very upset and they say, well, they can understand the numbers, how I got the cost of the company at 6.22. But they say, well, surely that's wrong. You know, the market value today might be 90, but when this debt was first issued, you know, it may have been issued 10 years ago, and presumably then we charged 100. You know, market values change as investors want more or less return. And some say, well, surely it's costing us 8% less tax. Well, no, and the reason is, I don't want to go on here, I mean, the rules are rules. But the real reason we're looking at this is it's our best estimate of the cost of future debt. You see, the existing debt, we've already raised the money and presumably invested it. Finish with that. But if we're thinking of raising more money, how much is more money going to cost us? Well, if the existing debt is costing us 6.22, you know, because investors want 8.89. Surely, if we raise more money, we're going to have to offer 8.89%, otherwise they won't lend it to us. 
So, I mean, I'm not going to keep saying that. Uh, I hate saying a rule is a rule, it is. But there is how we can fit the Gospel Company. Um, one final thing. Uh, I said when we looked at the um, return to the investors, they get the full eight, but cost of company, they get the tax relief. Uh, I'm fully aware that for investors there could be personal tax implications, but we always ignore personal tax in this exam. So as far as we're concerned, the investor gets the full eight, but the company, more importantly, is only paying a net uh, $5.60. All right, well, took me a while, but that's easy. Now, they're a deal de desperately straightforward. Unfortunately, though, almost always in the exam, we're talking about redeemable debt, which does require more work. Again, there's no formula, but it, it always does take a little bit of time, this. Look at example 8, use that to explain. GPLC has in issue 6% debentures quoted at 85x int. So as before, the market value is 85 per $100 nominal. They are 6% debentures, so that's the coupon rate. The interest, therefore, 6% of nominal will be $6 per year. But here they're redeemable or repayable. $6 a year for five years. Again, as I just said, these are repayable, redeemable, same thing. And so there will be a repayment in five years' time, they'll be repaid at a premium of 10%. And what that means is the repayment, the nominal value was 100. If they repaid at a premium, the premium is on nominal value. So given they've 100. Um, Nominal value, the repayment here would be 110 in five years' time. If there's no mention of a premium, then fine, the repayment would be nominal value, which in this case would be 100. Well, fine. We use the same basic principle we used right at the beginning with, uh, when we looked at equity. Uh, we say that the market value is the investors who will determine it and it's the present value of the future receipts, the interest, the repayment, discounted at their required rate of return. So for part A, the return to investors, what are the investors going to be getting? Well, for five years, so one to five, they're getting interest of, what did I say, $6 a year. Always do this on $100 nominal on one unit. And then in five years' time, they're getting the repayment or redemption, which is said, of 110 And what we want to know, their required return, is whatever rate of interest will make the present value of those equal to the current market value. Now, I know I haven't been through all the discounting and so on yet, but really this should be basic revision, not just of the previous financial management exam, but right back uh, to the very first uh, management accounts exam. And so we shouldn't have a problem here. But again, I want to know what rate of interest makes the present value of those equal to the market value of 85. Well, we stick it in from the investor's point of view. They'd be paying 85 now. I want the present value of the receipts to be 85 as well. If the present value of the receipts is 85, we want the net present value of all of those flows to be zero. 
which you really should remember by definition is the internal rate of return the IRR By definition, the IRR is the rate of interest that makes the net present value equal to zero, which is what we're after. And how are we going to do it? Well, again, you should remember, but there is no formula. Uh, what we do is we make two guesses and then we approximate. So make sure you've got your discount tables handy. I'm going to make my first guess at 10%. T1 guesses to use after, but I'm going to make a guess at 10%. The present value of 85 now is 85. The present value of uh, 6 a year for 5 years, well it's an annuity, an equal amount each year. And so the discount factor is the 5 year annuity factor at 10%, 3.791. Twenty two point seven five. Then we've got hundred and ten, a single flow in five years' time. We use the ordinary present value factor, five years ten percent, which is point six two one. So you've turned to the tables, and these are the tables you get given in the exam. So the present value of the repayment, hundred and ten point six two one, sixty eight point three one which gives me a net present value 22.75 plus 68.31 minus 85. I get 6.06 .06 positive. Well, I want the MPV to be zero, so it's obviously not 10%. To end up with zero and lower MPV, um, the rate of interest must be higher than 10. I'm going to make a second guess at 15. So again, 85 now is 85. The annuity, six a year for five years. Well, the annuity factor, five years at 15%, is 3.352. Uh, and therefore, six times 3.352, present value 20. Oh, do, 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 sorry. Um, 20.11. Uh, the redemption, the ordinary five year factor at 15% is 0.497. And therefore, the present value 54.67. Uh, and therefore, a net present value 20.11 plus 54.67. Minus 85, 10.22, negative. Uh, and so we've gone too far. To get an NPV of zero, uh, the internal rate of return must be between 10 and 15. And just as you, you should have done in previous exams, we simply approximate between them, assuming linearity. Now, some people learn a formula here, which I, if you've heard my lectures for the previous papers, you'll know I hate, because you're not given a formula. And if you understand the logic, you don't need one. So I'll do this once, slowly, but only once. This really has to be something you can rattle off. Uh, incidentally, in earlier exams, you tended to be doing this in relation to projects. In this exam, no, the chances of doing this for a project uh, are remote. But where you're very likely to need to do it is working out the cost of debt. However, let me uh, approximate to the IRR. I'll do it the way I always do, but it's your choice. If you remember, if you do it a different way and you remember, fine. There is only ultimately one answer. Uh, we say at... 10%, it was plus 6.06. .06. The second guess at 15%, it was minus 10.22. So 
So over a change of five percentages, the MPB has fallen from plus six to minus 10. It's fallen by 18.28. Or putting it the other way around, a change of 18 in the MPV is accounted for by a change of 5% in the interest rate. And we can now write down the IRR, or the required return. We can write it straight down. Our first guess was 10%. We know it's more than 10. Now the question is how much more? Well, at 10%, we got 6.06. .06. To get zero, we need a fall of 6.06. .06. We know a fall of 18 is 5%. So a fall of 6 is 6.06 .06 divided by 18.28. It's that fraction of 5%. A drop of 18 was 5%. We want a drop of 6. Well, six is about a third of 18, six eighteenths. It's that proportion of 5%, which gives me an internal rate of return Oh dear, I hope I've got my arithmetic right. I get 11.66%. 6.06 divided by 18.28 times 5. Uh, 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 yeah, 11.66%. Now uh, let me remind you that although that's how I'd leave it in the uh, exam, two decimal places, remember it is... Uh, actually only approximate. What we can really say is it's about 11-12% because uh, we always in these workings we always assume the relationship is linear whereas it's actually going to be a curve so it's not going to be exactly 11.66 but that also means if you use different guesses you know, if, for instance, you'd use 10 and 20% as your guesses, you will end up with a slightly different answer, but that doesn't matter in the exam. If you're more than a percent different, you've almost certainly made a mistake. But use any guesses you want in arriving at this internal rate of return. Okay, well, that's fine, except, just as I said with example 7, it's very unlikely in the exam that you'd be asked for the investor's required return. You could be. So again, I've not wasted time. But what's far more important for the exam is being able to work out the cost of debt to the company. And so only do part A if you're asked for it. But usually it's simply part B. What is the cost of debt? debt to the company. And here, for the same reason as before, it's different because the company will pay out interest of whatever it was, six a year, but they'll get the tax relief on it, the net cost will be lower. So if we set up the schedule exactly the same way as before, the market value now is 85. Uh, the interest of five years, well, it is six a year, but with tax at 30%, the net cost is only 70% or 420. Uh, the repayment, the redemption, well, although the interest is tax allowable, the redemption isn't. And so the redemption, we'd still pay a full 110 and again, we need the internal rate of return, two guesses, and approximate. Well, I won't waste time at 10%. Uh, 85 is 85. The interest, it's an annuity for five years, so the factor 3.791. The repayment, 
a single flow in five years' time, so the ordinary present value factor 0.621. Uh, 4.2 times 3.791, uh, 15.92, 110 times 0 0.621, 68.31, 68 uh, the net present value. Oh, sorry, I've got a new calculator. It does seem to do very strange things. 15.92 plus 68.31 minus 85. It gives me 0.77 negative. Uh, now, in fact, I've done this to save a bit of time here. All right. Uh, it's negative at 10%. And so the internal rate of return is slightly but lower than 10%, you know, to get a net present value of zero. But if you get uh, an answer so close to zero in the exam, and it has happened before now, then given any answer is only ever an approximation anyway, if it's that close to zero, don't waste time making a second guess. I mean, usually you need a second guess, like we did in part A. I've shown you what to do. But if it's so close, the MPV is so close to zero, well, fine. Um, the cost of debt to the company, effectively, is 10%. Now, do notice one thing. Although I've already said it is very unusual for them to want part A, the return to investors, and so don't, for heaven's sake, waste time doing part A if it's not asked for. It's part B that matters the cost of the company. Do notice you can't go from one to the other. You know, and it was redeemable. We could take the um, return to investors and multiply by 1 minus t. But here, look what happens. Return to investors 11.66. Uh, 1 minus t, well, it doesn't equal 10%. You can't go from one to the other. Uh, the KD 1 minus t only works if it's redeem irredeemable. If it's redeemable, you have no choice. You have to work out the internal rate of return of the after-tax flows. Just one final thing here. Some people get very upset about the order of the flows. If an investor, fine, investor pay 85, receive 610. And some people say, here, when you're looking at the company, shouldn't it be the other way around? You know, shouldn't we receive 85, pay out 420, pay out 110? <coughs> well, fine, yes. If it makes you happy, you do that. You'll get exactly the same answer. Because, you know, an MPV of plus zero is the same as an MPV of minus zero. It doesn't matter. Now, the way we generally set it out that way, the way I've done, is simply because that's what we're used to doing. Assuming you've done this before in earlier exams or at university, we normally do have outflow inflows. So, you know... Why change things and confuse it? But by all means, I say again, if you reverse the signs, plus, minus, minus, plus zero is still the same as minus zero, you'll end up with exactly the same answer. All right, well, I'm going to stop that there, because we've done equity in the last lecture, we've done debt in this lecture. The final thing is to put the two together, because, of course, most companies are geared, most companies borrow partly from equity, partly from debt. Uh, we need to work out an overall cost. But that will be the third, the last lecture on this chapter.